Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 Word and to the preview for the 2019 Canadian Grand Prix. Now this is one of my favourite races of the season and I'm hoping, as I'm sure many of you are as well, that it will be much better than last year. I mean, in terms of talking points, there was that big crash on the opening lap between Brendan Hartley and Lance Stroll, which resulted in an early safety car. Sergio Perez and Carlos Sainz came together shortly after the safety car restart at Turn 1, which left the Mexican sliding across the grass. Charles Leclerc and Fernando Alonso were embroiled in yet another one of their 2018 battles before the Spaniard had to unfortunately retire with a mechanical issue. Other than that though, not a huge amount happened apart from the chequered flag being waved a lap too early. High drama. The story of the weekend though was probably Max Verstappen. He was under massive pressure after his crash in Monaco, but absolutely dominated practice in Canada by topping all three sessions. However, it was Sebastian Vettel who took pole position with a lap time of a 110.764. The German also went on to take the win on Sunday and of course was followed home by Valtteri Bottas and Max Verstappen. Max did set the fastest lap of the race with a 113.864 on lap 65, and there were 17 drivers who managed to make the finish, but only six of those were classified on the lead lap. Let's have a look at some of the track stats then, and the track length is 4.361 kilometres, or if you would prefer, that is 2.710 miles. There are 14 corners around the circuit, that's six to the left and eight to the right, and there will be a total of 70 laps on Sunday. There are three DRS zones, that's one down the start finish straight, one between turns seven and eight, and then one down that really long straight between the hairpin and that final chicane. And the race lap record was set all the way back in 2004 by Rubens Barrichello with a 113.622. The run from pole to the turn one braking zone is 159.154 metres, and the total pit lane loss time at, of course, 80 kilometres an hour is 18.1 seconds. The highest lateral G comes in at 3.7, that's at turn 5, and drivers are at full throttle for 76% of the lap, quite the contrast to Monaco. Also, quite the contrast to Monaco, overtaking is absolutely possible around the circuit Gilles Villeneuve. Turn 1 is the first opportunity, and that's enhanced, of course, by the DRS zone on the run to it. There is also the, I guess, option to run your opponent out of road on the outside, and those first two corners do often give us some good side-by-side -side action, and as we've seen in the past, that can run all the way to turn three. The hairpin at turn 10 is also a very good spot for overtaking, and with a decent run to it, it is likely we will see some passing happen there. However, with that long run down the back straight, anyone overtaking at the hairpin could be left very vulnerable, and so drivers might take the option to be more patient and wait for the run to turn 13. We do sometimes see moves into that final chicane and with that runoff area on the outside, there is space for the car on the outside to bail out. Still though, it is very, very tight in there and of course, avoiding the wall of champions on the outside will surely be in the back of drivers' minds. We've seen some big names in that wall in the past. So the circuit Gilles Villeneuve, or the Il Notre Dame circuit as it was originally named, first appeared on the F1 calendar back in 1978 and has hosted the Canadian Grand Prix on a total of 39 occasions. In that time, there have been 23 different winners, the first being Gilles Villeneuve and the most recent, of course, Sebastian Vettel. The pole sitter has gone on to win the race on 19 occasions, with the average win margin being 7.7 seconds. And if you are interested, by the way, the smallest margin of victory was back in 2000, and it was less than two tenths of a second. The safety car is often seen in Canada with it appearing at 13 races since 1997, with the most in one race being six in that chaotic Sunday back in 2011. As always, massive thank you to Lights Out Blog for providing some of the stats for this preview. There is a link to the website in the description down below if you're interested in some more in-depth stats and don't forget to give them a follow over on Twitter as well. The tyre compounds available for this weekend are the same as in Monaco, so the softest three, that's the hard C3, the medium C4 and the soft C5. Pirelli have rated the tyre stress around the circuit at 2 out of 5 with grip and abrasion being 1. Strategy is an interesting one in Canada because the pit lane loss time is quite low and so it can lead to a mix of strategies as we saw last year. Having said that, most drivers did still opt for the one stopper in 2018, but with safety cars a distinct possibility, that can have a big influence on strategy and teams do often have to think on the fly. Weather has been known to play a part, but there have actually only been five races officially billed as rain affected at the circuit. And the weather this weekend looks set to be dry. As always, though, that is at time of recording and could easily change between now and the race.
Time for the form guide then before I get onto my predictions. Lewis Hamilton took his first ever win at the circuit back in 2007 and has won another five times since. The only driver to have a better record in Canada is Michael Schumacher and that's with a total of seven wins. He has also taken pole position on six occasions, has the Brit. So Lewis does seem to definitely enjoy Montreal, but the world champion did only manage a fifth place finish last year. As for his teammate, well, since 2015, Bottas has always been on the podium, and that includes two third-place finishes for Williams. In fact, since his debut in 2013, the Finn has only failed to score once. Sebastian Vettel won in 2018, but had only won once previously in Canada, and that was back in 2013. However, the German has never failed to score in Montreal, with his worst finish being eighth in 2008. On top of that, he has also managed to get pole position on four occasions. Charles Leclerc managed to pick up a point last year with 10th place for Sauber and Pierre Gasly just missed out finishing 11th in 2018. Max Verstappen has mixed form at the circuit Gilles Villeneuve. From his four appearances at the track, he has failed to finish once, failed to score once, twice of course if we include that DNF, and he scored twice with one of those being his podium finish last season. Away from the top three teams and Nico Hülkenberg has good Canada form but more on him shortly as does teammate Daniel Ricciardo. He has won once, been on the podium on another occasion and has scored points two more times. However, he has also failed to make it to the points three times from his seven appearances. Sergio Perez has stood on the podium in Montreal and that was back in 2012 for Sauber. Since then though, he has only made it to the points twice. Kevin Magnussen has struggled in Canada over the years. In fact, from his four appearances, he has only managed to score once and that was ninth for McLaren back in 2014. And finally, local boy Lance Stroll crashed out heavily in 2018 but did finish ninth for Williams in 2017. On to my predictions then. So far in 2019, the only thing I've got right is my gut feeling at the start of the year that we could be set for Mercedes domination. That's not going to put me off though and I'm still going to give it a go. Now, in theory, I could go with Ferrari as they did win last year. However, Vettel's win in 2018 was the Scuderia's first at the track since 2004, so it's not like it's been one of their better tracks over recent years. Also, Toto Wolff has said that he is expecting a challenging weekend for Mercedes and that the circuit will favour their rivals. So with all of that in mind, I've gone with Lewis Hamilton for pole and the win with his teammate following him home on Sunday. I mean, the form guide pretty much says it all. Both Hamilton and Bottas have excellent records in Canada. And if you throw into that mix the fact that Toto Wolff is playing down their chances, we pretty much know which way this is going to go. I've also put Max Verstappen on the podium mainly because of last year, I guess, and also how he started in 2019 and the fact that Red Bull has been on the podium at the last two Canadian Grand Prix. Don't worry though, Ferrari fans, I'm not completely writing them off. They should be pretty strong this weekend, but I'm not totally convinced that they're going to be challenging for the win. They can certainly fight Max Verstappen for third though. I have gone with Pierre Gasly for fastest lap again. One or two thought I was being ridiculous by picking him for other races, but I do have my reasons. Let's be honest, he will likely be sixth at best if the top three teams finish without drama, and he's probably going to be at least half a minute up the road from the rest of the pack. So, late pit stop, softest tyre, fastest lap, bonus point, boom. So yeah, there is some logic in there somewhere. As for my one to watch, I'm going to go with Nico Hülkenberg. His form in Canada is pretty solid, with the German never finishing lower than eight since his retirement from the race in 2013. In fact, since 2014, his record is three eighth place finishes, a fifth and a seventh. So he absolutely could be in with a great shot of some good points this weekend. And let's face it, Renault could certainly use a decent haul in Canada to really kickstart their season. One thing Nico will need to sort out, though, are his Saturdays. The German has been knocked out in Q1 for various reasons at three of the opening six races. Not a particularly brilliant record for Nico Hülkenberg. However, you can overtake in Canada, so if it all goes wrong on Saturday again, at least there will be overtaking opportunities. That is it then for the Canadian Grand Prix preview, but don't forget you can let me know your thoughts ahead of this weekend's race in the comments section down below. Now, there are no watch-alongs this weekend, but I will be back on Saturday with the Canadian Grand Prix qualifying report, and it will be a late one with the video probably not going up until around midnight. And of course, as ever, we will be live shortly after the race on Sunday with the race reaction stream. In the meantime, though, you can follow me over on social media. The links to Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and of course to Discord are all in the description down below. But as ever, thank you for watching. I've been Sean. This has been the F1 Word, and until next time, goodbye.